This is Debunk TV. What is truth? What is truth? Shabam, there it is, the big kahuna, the spicy enchilada, the fizzy lifting drink, the question of the ages. They are two different Absolutely. claims. So, like, truth is basically subjective. Yeah. This is not an evidence problem. This is a worldview thing. No fossilized eyeball, trust me. This is Debunk TV. Welcome to Debunk TV. I'm Bub Coons, Carl Corby, right there. How goes it? As always, I'm a blessed man. You are a blessed man. <laughs> yeah. And we're about to do a talk that I think is going to bless lots of other people. We are in a series on this whole concept of evolution and the possibilities of it. Last week, or the last episode, we covered critical thinking, how to just parse through some of the information and headlines and stuff that you see in textbooks and look at them critically and come up with your own point of view after you weigh the evidence and and pay attention to the words. Uh, We left last time with this quote. Although the comparative study of living animals and plants may give very convincing circumstantial evidence, fossils provide the only historical documentary evidence that life has evolved from simpler to more and more complex forms. That's what we're going to explore. And like our Proverbs verse, seems good, seems right, till you cross-examine so you it. The other side. But exactly we're going to hit right. it pretty hard right now with yep. an overview. This is Debunk 16. As usual, you can get all of our debunk videos at getdebunked.com. Free, all the time. This is number 16. Fossils prove evolution. Really? We've unearthed millions of fossils around the world, so with all this evidence, so to speak, it's clear that the fossil record proves evolution, right? Well, actually, no. Didn't when Darwin was alive, and hasn't since he's been gone. In fact, Chucky D himself knew this when he wrote the following. Geology assuredly does not reveal any such finely graduated organic chain. And this, perhaps, is the most obvious and gravest objection which can be urged against my theory. The explanation lies, as I believe, in the extreme imperfection of the geological record. Okay, but surely after all the time since Darwin, digging and discovering fossil after fossil, we have a more perfect geological record that supports evolution, right? Not even close, bud. Listen to how two renowned evolutionary biologists summarize the truth. Instead of finding the slow, smooth, and progressive changes, they saw in the fossil record rapid bursts of change, new species appearing seemingly out of nowhere and then remaining unchanged for millions of years, patterns hauntingly reminiscent of creation. The fossil record doesn't show gradual change, and every paleontologist has known that ever since Cuvier, or however you pronounce that. Okay, I could go on and on, but there's always going to be opposing views because on both sides of the debate, the same evidence is interpreted through different worldviews. You gotta remember that, people. Facts don't say anything. People say things based on their interpretation of facts influenced by their worldview. But that's a whole other subject, and I don't want to get into it right now. Instead, hey, let's have a little fun and take a look at some popular secular articles and charts on the fossil record and see if we can learn to separate facts from interpretation of facts by asking a few simple questions. Question one, did the artiste take any artistic license with what I'm looking at here? Check this out because this happens all the time. Look, isn't that sweet? So cute and fluffy. Okay, why do you think the artist made these creatures appear more human-like by throwing in an affectionate smile and depicting them hanging out like a human family going to a picnic or something? Why did he draw them walking upright? Why make the shapes and colors of their eyes more human than ape? Is any of it based on actual fossil evidence? Of course not. But if you want the story of evolution to appear more convincing, you just might fill in missing gaps with your presuppositional imagination. Just saying. (laughs) Question two. Is the attention-grabbing headline or title supported by actual facts? For instance, take a look at this popular book called Why Evolution is True. We don't even have to go any further than the jacket on this one because on it you got a dino evolving into a bird in three simple steps. There you go. But then on the inside, this is written, and I kid you not. The jacket depicts a chronological sequence of fossils showing the evolution of birds. We do not know whether the actual line of descent included, now wait for it, the first three. Say what now? Doesn't that mean these three shouldn't be on the cover then? Which means all you got is a modern bird, right? No evolution, just a bird. Talk about worldview filling in gaps. On to question three. What do the graphics on evolutionary charts indicate? I mean, they sure do look convincing. For instance, on this one from the dinosaur book, you got solid red columns and white columns showing gradual progression over time. But... Let's read the almost imperceptible two-point font over here. It reads, tinted areas indicate solid fossil evidence, which means the white areas represent no solid fossil evidence, right? Okay, then take them away. 
Uh-oh, looks like patterns hauntingly reminiscent of creation, I'd say, right from their own charts. And the same thing goes for the dotted lines on this one. Look at all of them. Just so we're clear, dotted lines indicate zero evidence. Remove them and what do you get? No transitional forms or evidence of gradual progression. A bat is a bat, a kangaroo is a kangaroo, and a horse is a horse. Of course, of course, unless of course the horse is Mr. Ed. Look, people, all I'm saying here is if you got facts, put them in there. If you don't, leave them out. But don't draw downright dubious daft, dare I declare, dunderheaded dotted lines of deliberate deception dogmatically and dastardly doodle to disguise definitive data. No. Just admit what you actually see, overwhelming evidence of living things, according to their kinds, suddenly appearing, which, as a reminder, is exactly what the Bible teaches. Now, I don't even have time to get into TV, movies, and documentaries. All I ask is that you use the same line of questioning when you watch them. And in summary, we agree with Mr. D. Geology assuredly does not reveal any such finely graduated organic chain. Not then, not now, not ever. And that means the whole idea that the fossil record proves evolution has been debunked. Adios. Well, there you go. Yep. And and God we should just, just go home after that sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we're, they're, getting, we're, they're hitting some subjects that are rubbing some people wrong and making some people happy at the same time. This is a yeah. This is a worldview thing, and, a, and where your worldview is also sets your eternity and, where, and your morality. And so it can be Absolutely. abrasive when you say all this stuff you thought you knew right. and all these people were studying, you were fooled. Yeah, I've been called names that I didn't even know existed, man. It's been very interesting to see like yeah. some of the videos that we've put up and now the comments below. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Yeah, we just got enemies by trying to just tell people to yeah, think and like, share, share scripture with them. And, look at yeah. these things. That's that's the bottom line of what we're saying. Yeah. So, uh, But, you know, what I find, it's easier to attack somebody than to attack the arguments. And so... Yeah, so and I like that we stick right in there. It's not about a, the person. It's about nope. the ideas or the ideology right. and it's about exploring that, which we're going to do this whole episode right. is talk about the fossil record yes. and the charts that we didn't make these charts up nope other people made these charts Absolutely. up and drew them and we're going to get right into it we left last time with this one yep. right there it is there's the one that we left last time and we said we're going to talk about this the whole episode here we go well you start down at the bottom bub see it's very simple yep. you start with a single cell and then given enough time right circumstances you get everything that you see up there but there's just one problem what's that that is an outdated chart, Bob. Yeah, let's update it. We need to update it. There it is. There's the new chart. And do you notice anything different about the chart? There's a bunch of differences, but the yep. major is... This thing at the bottom <laughs> here. Common ancestral community of primitive cells. Yeah. Common ancestral community. Well, I thought it was one. Yeah, yeah. We we, we, we went yeah. from the, the single cell, brother. We, yeah. got, we got a family of yeah, cells. Yeah, so they all popped up somehow. Now, it's kind of interesting to me. We don't know how in the world we got the first cell to evolve, nope. but now we got a whole family of cells we, evolving. And then they all become something else. <laughs> and yeah. did, notice all the crossover back and forth yeah. on this chart here. Guys... This chart is not showing you that one thing turned into something else. As a minimum, it's showing you that a family turned into something. How you get if you can't get an individual to evolve? How do you get a family to evolve? It's just like just a bad uh, GPS system. That's all it looks like to me. It's just it's a mess. Yes. But I mean, I'm sure it all makes sense to someone. But in, in a few years, we've switched from one common ancestor to a community of primitive cells. And that's Remember? the important thing to think about. And I think you're going to go through a bunch of stuff now yeah. and explore all these charts that I grew up seeing. Yep, me too. Right? And I and I always like, I, I actually, you know, didn't think too much back then. I just thought it could all work together. God did something through yeah. evolution. And now that I find theistic evolution, which we may cover one day, is is can be easily debunked too. But yep. how do we... How do we deal with the, the this is the real stuff that yes, people are they're putting together and drawing charts and let, let's go let's go for it. I say go for it. This is the chart that started me off on this whole adventure to be real honest with you from the dinosaur data book and it's the dinosaur family tree. Uh, I'm the same as you, Bob. Yeah. I was just raised with you see these sayings and yeah. my well, first Sunday school teacher after I got saved, after I became a really? Christian, taught me you take evolution, you put it in the Bible, God used it, God directed it, and there's no yeah. problems. Yeah. So I looked at this chart and I was like, okay, God directed it. But Didn't, before you sign anything, what should you do, Bob? I think you should like, oh, my mom told me just like the fine print. Yep. Study the fine print. Read right? the fine yeah. print. So when I'm doing this in an audience, I say, okay, can you all read the fine print? And everybody's like, no. You can't read that right there? <laughs> See, it's, re it's real, it's on. real fine print. So then we blow it up for them and then have them read it. But here's another point yeah. that we were talking about even earlier. It, it, it's... Sometimes you think this, these people must be doing it on purpose. Yeah. Because why is the tiniest thing the most important thing over there, okay? Tinted areas indicate the real fossil record. Yep. Solid fossil evidence is the... 
Why tinted leave that areas. off? Yeah, the tinted areas. Um, you know, th th it's an interesting point, and it's yeah. one that, look, there. I believe that there are those that this is just all they know. I was one. Yeah. It's all they knew. Then there are those that know that this doesn't work, and there is absolutely yeah. some deception going on. Yeah. And these kind of things make you lead, uh, lean you to believe that there's serious deception yeah. going on. But I'm like, okay, this is your chart. Let me take a look at it, and what does it say? Tinted areas. So I, I'm a simple guy. I really yeah. am. Tinted areas are the red areas, so the red is fact. Yep. Yeah. What's that mean about the white stuff? It's not fact. And which it's, means it's, it's like a fable. Our like, verse that like we did we last did. time. It's a myth. Yeah. It's yeah. a it's, fable. Yeah. And by the way, they will be turned from the truth, truth and chase after fables. a fable. And these are fables, guys. These are fables. What this actually shows is when you get rid of the fable, when you get rid of the white stuff, it shows that an apatosaur was always an apatosaur, an ankylosaur was always an ankylosaur, a pachycephalosaur was always a pachycephalosaur. This chart actually shows that one thing stayed one thing, never changed from or into anything else. That seems to line right up beautifully with, with Scripture. Isn't that kind what after God kind. said? Yeah, every time. Now, we have to look deeper at this chart, though, because take a look. You see this yellow area down here? Yeah. That band right there, uh, according to the evolutionary model, right. which we need to know better than the world. We yeah. don't need to run and hide from this stuff. Yeah. 30 million years of time. But notice how much white stuff is in there, how much change had to take place for this thing to work. Um, Tons of it. Right? Yeah, like, look at that. All of it. And then... The next band is 70 million years. The band over that's 80 million years. So things change like crazy. I mean, left, right, and all over for 30 million years. But then for 150 million years, they didn't, didn't change. change. That's it. I, I like the way that I look. I'm not changing anymore. You're, just, you're, you're, just, you're good. Hey, you're dude, good. I just want to go back 20 years, bub. And, yeah. If we go back 20 years, I, was, look, <laughs> I, I forgot what I, I looked was like good 20, 20 years ago. Years ago bro. Yeah. I don't need yeah. 150 million. I just I want to go back to being years. able to do 20 push-ups. <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, I don't care about 20 years. But So that chart, yeah. when we look at it critically, actually supports the Word of God. Yeah, yeah. and, and they, they always will, right? Absolutely. It, it goes back to it. But, I mean, there's some, there's some common objections to this. It, it, it's because... It, and, Here's the thing. It's like, well, thing. There's people now, professor scientists saying, it is our. It's it's evolved to its maximum. Right. So therefore, it stops. So some things get hit perfection yeah. before they stop. And so that's why the last 150 million years you didn't see anything. You saw all of it change at the beginning. Yeah. But what and is I, that really saying now? See, I, I love it because it's the same way that the, they had theories on punctuated equilibrium. Yeah. A lizard goes in the egg, a bird comes out. We can't explain it, the, the, the time, so we just invent something exactly. that helps us get there. There has to be some explanation to point to the fact yeah. that there's no evidence. You can't just see exactly. I've got another e explanation. Yeah. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. So, it, so it, it, it's Well, yeah, it's funny because they're the ones that are telling us there's a, always throwing out the God of the gap yeah. and going, well, we just go back to the Lord. That's how he made it, and yet they have 70 years of nothing, oh. and they know that there, ha there has to be reasons for each one of those transitions, but they just go, well, it didn't, so let me invent a word exactly. or a term like punctuated equilibrium, and that ought to just do it. I'll just uh, assume that's how it happened. And by the way, we find things in the fossil record that they date, not me, they yeah. date 300 and 400 million years old. Yeah. It's so a whole, whole and they're exactly question. the same yeah. as what we see today. Yeah. But there's there's here's another thing we have to pay attention to because those charts not only will they do like that uh, the different colored line there the tinted and that, yeah. there's another trick here watch you see the dashed lines this yeah. supposedly shows that you start with a jawless fish on the right far here. left over there you start with that jawless fish and then boom given enough time it turns into everything a mammal but dashed lines guess what the dashed lines mean. Fables. Yes. Nothing. No evidence. So evidence is the broad stuff, and what that actually shows is that one thing stayed one <laughs> stayed thing, one never thing. changed from or into anything else. <laughs> exactly. Which, Every gap has none of the things. So. Which, by the way, if God did what he said that he did the way that he said that he did, that's what I should find. Yeah. There's another That's what you trick. did find. Yeah. We found that. We did. Yeah, and here's another way of looking at it. Skinny line, bold line. And skinny if you look line, at it, bold line. skinny line yeah. is... Fable, fable, bold line is fact. So this actually what? shows how much how much more fable is there than the the real? Look at this one; it's a dot. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What, I mean, it's um, well massive. And what is this of? This is showing how you start over there with uh, the uh, 
a, a fish type fish animal, thing, and, and it turns into, into fish us? all the way down to us and to the amphibians. But here's what I find re really interesting about this: if you want to get into this and really de start digging, you start looking at the dates on these things. Yeah. And so, so supposedly this thing turned into this thing, turned into this thing, and we're going to do this with the birds. Yeah. And what you start finding is that actually you find grandchildren living before grandparents <laughs> by the dates. By the dates. But no, we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll come oops. back. You can wait for that one. Get to some other ways. We got the other ways to look at it, right? Here's your tinted lines again. No, notice the dark stuff. The dark stuff is fact. The yeah. light stuff is fable. But this chart supposedly shows you start with a groundhog type animal, given enough time right circumstances, that groundhog turned into the hippopotamus, the giraffe, and the cow. Can we do a bunny trail, bub? Yeah, sure, please. I got to do a bunny I don't trail. Get it. We have a groundhog type animal, right? Groundhog type animal. Over time, Mutation turns into a hippopotamus. Guys, <laughs> a, for, forget about a giraffe. Uh, Two and a half foot long heart. We're not even going to go there. Uh, hippopotamus. Just one design feature on a hippopotamus. A hippo has skin that's up to two inches thick. Yep. All right? And, and and just think about this. Why would you need that two inch thick skin? Thanks for asking. Because inside that skin, they have a gland that secretes a clear substance that when it hits the air, it turns red. Yep. You'll, you'll, you can go do research and you'll read about blood sweat, hippos sweat blood. No, they don't. It's not sweat, it's not blood. It turns red when it hits the air, but then it drips down the body and it's a sunblock. And because they're very vicious and they bite yep. each other, they get cuts and everything. Well, if they get in that dirty, nasty water, they're going to get an infection yeah. and die. Yeah. Nope, this stuff has an antiseptic. It's an antiseptic sunblock, and we can't even go to CVS Pharmacy and buy one of those things, brother, no. but they produce it, and that came from a mouse. Uh, yeah, well, we see the mice do that <laughs> every day. It's just obvious that it became a hippopotamus, and I, it grew new skin. It went from fur to skin and hair to skin. And don't That's, even yeah. try the giraffe, because I'm telling you, the giraffe is like yeah. blows that out of the water. Yeah, but then, I mean, this is this is not just stuff that we pull out of books. You, no. you were at a museum, right? Oh, this is yeah. Smithsonian. Yeah, this is it. This right is the here. Smithsonian Museum of Natural History, uh, right underneath Henry the Elephant. You start and see, take a look here. You got your little mouse. That's good. And then, given enough time, the mouse turns into the groundhog type thing, and then the groundhog type things turns into the big old mammal thing, and then turns into <laughs> wow. the bigger. But notice something. Notice it becomes a paleo mastodon. <laughs> I mean, if, 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 if that's un fabulous. But look, you've got nothing tying all of this right. together. Right, zero, zero, gaps, 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 and they just... you got groundhogs. It sounds like they just found the animals and then said, what did it start with? Yes. And then put some animals up on the picture like a puzzle and went just, well, kind of like that. And Even though there's no pieces of the other puzzle. No pieces tying it together. Yeah. But that's what this whole chart shows is when you go through there, and eventually you get even down to people. But you know what? People. Forget about this, Bob. Yep. Forget about that. A groundhog, or I'm sorry, a mouse turning into an elephant, that's not a big deal. No, this is a huge deal. Though. This is a big deal. Where do we go here? Get it? Big deal? Yeah. Elephant? No, anyway. You got a two and a half inch long mouse with a tail. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that had mutation that eventually became a sperm whale, yeah. much less a blue whale. I mean, you can drive a Volkswagen Beetle yeah. through the artery of a blue whale's heart, and that supposedly came from a two and a half inch long mouse that had yeah. mutations. And but you think we got a problem? I, well, there's no problem because a they, they, they well, first of all they don't explain it. Yeah, well, they, they, there it, is it, no explanation. There's no explanation, so they yeah. they extrapolate and they make up stuff and they tell fables and have suggestions and all the things we went through, and and then they just expect us. To give it and go well. That's what that's what the lab coat guys tell us, and I think that's a big thing for Christians oh, right now, it is. And, or it anybody. Is. Well, a, a guy with a lab coat with six degrees told me the mouse became the whale. So somewhere in that billions of years, it could have happened. And I don't care how many letters you have after your name, none of us know more than God. Exactly. And that's the one we yep. need to be putting our focus yep. on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, th but this whole process, they have a chart for it. Yep. I got a chart. Yep. You start down here with a couple of Mises. That's plural for mice, right? For mice. Yeah. So you got a couple of Mises, and then given enough time, right circumstances, to take a look, you get all the different mammals. What are you going to do? I see dotted lines <laughs> there, though. Again, nothing from the the, the hard facts, yeah. and it's just we're going to beat this over, over the head. But let's let's keep going. What do we take a look here? at that red dot there, yep. man? I have been accused so many times of Carl. All you're doing is beating up on evolution. You're not giving us any evidence for mm. creation. You see that red dot there? You notice how that dashed line for the aardvark doesn't even connect in with anything else? It doesn't. It just abruptly begins. Bang. Yeah. 
So I say, get rid of the dashed lines. There's your evidence for creation. Yep. <laughs> it just came onto the scene. You want yep. evidence for creation? Well, so does all these, right? Exactly. If you have no lines, they all have starting points, and they're all relative at the same time. You want right. evidence for creation? Use their charts. Get rid of the, the fable and look at the actual evidence. Yeah. But but it can, it goes even deeper than that. We didn't, oh, yeah. we weren't just animals. We came from a whole oh, other species I like of things. Even right? deeper. That's yeah. another even pun. deeper. <laughs> even deeper. It goes even deeper. <laughs> Take a listen. Uh, when microbiologist Mitchell Sogan decided to trace human evolution to its roots, he had no idea he might find sponges. Yes, absolutely. And by the way, we can now prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that we evolved from the sponge because getting rid of athlete's foot yep. is very difficult because it's a fungus. Yes. And so when you're trying to get rid of it, you're killing off a piece of your ancestry. I read that. I literally really read, read that. I read that. <laughs> and Pete, I'm not lying. <laughs> It, and, and people, uh, it, yeah, it's it's funny. What what's that old quote? If you if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Oh boy! Right, oh, and boy. it's and it it's it's more true in this area of yeah. quote unquote science that's changing constantly. And by the way, we have now found the missing link to we this know. thing. This, I don't know how to deal with it. Quite frankly, we have to bring SpongeBob every <laughs> now and then. There. Okay, sometimes we go a little a little uh, humor pedestrian. But uh, that's like the dumbest cartoon ever. I just got to be honest with you. It's like the and dumbest cartoon. That's why cartoon it's good ever. to use it because it's, it's that's how, how ridiculous it may seem. But uh, back to uh, something serious. Yeah, let's get to the serious stuff. Serious. And, and here we're, we're in this. We're in a whole other kind of world now. Here we have our two and a half inch long mouse who, over millions of years, turned itself into the wolf, and then slowly gradually went back. Wolf-like animal. Sorry, yes, got to be correct. Like, yeah. Then slowly, gradually went back into the ocean to become the whale. And there, this is from the Denver Museum of Natural History. But you know what I love now, Carl? Yeah. Is all the lines are missing. All yeah. the dots. They just for, forget it. It's just all pictures. Just pictures now. And by the way, notice the, how many fossils they have to do it. One, two, three. We got four fossils in there, brother. So you better sell out for it. For all these <laughs> things, the four fossils. But they do have, now I have to be honest, they have fossils on that. And that's another episode. Yeah. We have to do just one on nothing but whale evolution. Okay, whale evolution is coming along. Here one. we go. Season but two. Watch this. Let's take a look at their chart. Here it is. Oh, I forgot. Yep. Smithsonian, Adam. When he was filming uh, our uh, worm guy, yeah, the worm he, guy. He, he also <laughs> got, uh, here it is. So slow gradual processes over millions of years. We got our wolf-like animal, slowly, gradually, millions of years, slow gradual process. Turn, whoa, whoa. Boom, boom, boom. boom. From, and one, that's a punctuated equilibrium thing boom. that we just, that's 80 million years of evolution. Yep. Suddenly that thing, it, now it's walking. Slowly, gradually, like over millions a, of years, wolf-like animal goes <gasps> back. Boom. Guys. In the blink of a blink of an eye. Are you yeah, seeing the yeah. dramatic changes here? I like this one though. When he goes around the corner, gradually. goes around the corner. What does he become? Slowly, gradually. There he is. David Orca. Copperfield would love to be able to do a. It's good stuff, <laughs> man. That's well. How, how, what's a, explain that? How did we get there? What here is we all go. this? There's our chart. This is the one that shows the actual evidence with our couple wolf-like animals, yep. and they turn into all the whales. Anything stand out? Have we taught you anything when you please. look at this chart now? Yeah, please learn at least one thing. Dotted lines, shaded areas are fables. And right? there's question marks. When you look in there, those yep. are all little question marks that they put in there. So now you're beyond the dotted line. You're, you're in the, uh, the I don't know. Absolutely. I have uh, no idea. Absolutely. It yeah. is fable to the core. So I'm going to do my own magic trick for you. You yep. ready? I am. Focus on those skulls. Yep. Focus. Focus. And that's what they really have. I didn't change the skulls. No. Nope. That's the facts. Those are, that's the actual <laughs> evidence right there. It's crazy, okay? isn't it? Christian, non-Christian, we all have the same evidence. How complex that slide before was, and you just take it out, and then you found bones. And you don't even know the order of the bones. It's, it's but here's just, where it gets yeah. good. We know somebody who's always been there who knows what happened, told us what happened. His name is God, and watch what he does. When he tells us that on day five he created great whales, I look at the fossil record, what I find is whales. Huh. So, again, fossil record... Evidence when you look at it through the lens of God's word, what we see in the world is consistent with what we read in the word of God. Every time. Every time. And you know what? Even though we we uh, we can we can think about it and look at all the all the data now and go, we've learned so much. But the reality is, this has been known for for a long a long, long time. time. Even time. even from the propon pro proponents that that claim that they know, yep. right? And Take a listen. I think you, we got a quote. <laughs> you take a listen. 
Why is not every geological formation and every stratum full of such intermediate lakes? Geology assuredly does not reveal any such finely graduated organic chain, and this is the most obvious and serious objection which can be urged against the theory. And this goes all the way back to? Mr. Chuck Darwin, right? 160 years, so, brother. They have known this is a problem, and it's still a problem. Don't trust us, because that's old and outdated. Yeah. Let's go to the current. Let's go to a guy recent here. Take a listen to what he has to say. Instead of finding the slow, smooth, and progressive changes Lyle and Darwin had expected, they saw on the fossil record rapid bursts of change. New species appearing seemingly out of nowhere. Hard work. And then <laughs> remaining unchanged for millions of years. But? Patterns hauntingly reminiscent of creation. I give, you win. That, that's, <laughs> that's pretty clear, but you know, we still, we, we still have a little more to say about this. I'm oh, gonna yeah. bring in Juan to talk oh, yeah. about Juan's this. Juan's gotta bring it. Yeah, take this away. What you see is influenced by what you've been taught and by what you're already expecting to see. So how can we see things for what they really are? Study the facts. Follow the evidence. Try hard not to be biased. For instance, let's consider the whole idea of whale evolution as typically presented. If you look at the facts, follow the evidence, and try not to be biased, you'll discover that it's absurdly improbable. That is to say, to go from a wolf-like, land-dwelling animal to a whale that swims in the ocean, too many absurdly improbable things have to happen altogether. Just consider the remodeling of the breathing apparatus. A mutation that converts the nostrils into a blowhole and relocates it to the top of the body would be lethal without another simultaneous mutation that restructures the skull bones, and another that restructures the skin, and another mutation that restructures the blood vessels and circulation, and another mutation that reconnects the blowhole to the lungs, and another one that rewires the nervous system. You get it? The odds of just one of these mutations occurring naturally are astronomical. <laughs> but when you consider adding a bunch of other incredibly complex mutations that must occur simultaneously in order for the animal to change and survive, you start to understand why the word impossible was invented. The same problem occurs over and over again when converting front legs into flippers, adding a ball joint that allows the tail to move up and down, transforming teeth into plates lined with brush-like fibers, modifying kidneys for saltwater intake, enlarging and renovating the lungs to withstand intense pressure of deep dives, incorporating thermal insulation, modifying ears, eyes, and skin to work effectively in aquatic environments, and on and on and on. Just stop it. The whole idea of whale evolution it didn't happen. It's another example of a wonderfully designed creature that points to the majesty of its creator. Thanks, Juan. That's good stuff. Very, very important to realize the design method and how all that stuff works together again with worldview yes, and knowing does. that scripture is, is always right. We gonna get into this? We have to get into this, but we can't do it this week. We're gonna have to do it next time. We'll see you guys later. Adios. See ya.